Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So let's see this case. And first of all, I'd like to thank Abhay for inviting me for this lovely symposium of his. And you can see someone has implanted a PCIOL in the AC. I made my scleral flaps. What is my game plan? My game plan is after the vitrectomy, which you see I'm doing, my game plan is to make the same IOL from the PC, from the AC into the PC. So I'm trying to do that. Remember, it's a one piece, non-foldable IOL, which has been implanted in the AC. I'm trying to do that, but look, it's not happening. So I thought, let me make my side port incision. And Hari Priya, you showed some nice one showing cutting of the cornea with that knife. I'm even worse. You know, I cut the haptic with the knife. So don't worry if you blame yourself, okay? I'm much worse than in that, okay? So I'm showing that to you how the knife, which I wanted to make my incision, has gone and cut the haptic. Now I'm in a game situation where I have no other choice but to explant the IOL. Now, look what I'm trying to do. I'm using two hands and I'm trying to explant that IOL, haptic. It's just not coming. It's so firmly stuck. Imagine putting a PC IOL in the AC. This shows how wrong the technique should would be. I'm trying with both hands. Now I know I'm stuck. So what am I going to do? I have no other choice but to use a vitrectomy probe. So I'm taking my vitrectomy probe. And with that, I'm chewing up that iris. I know it's butchery, but I can't help it at this stage. Okay. So now you can see I'm chewing up the iris as much as possible so that that area gets removed. Now I use the handshake technique. Use two glue forceps like a handshake and explant the broken haptic before it goes down. Now I still have the remaining haptic and the optic. So again, I use the handshake technique and explant the IOL. So far, so good. I've removed that IOL. Now I go in with the glued IOL technique and you all know this very well, but I already have a large incision. So I might as well use it like a non-foldable IOL. So I explant, uh, so I implant the first haptic Handshake technique, second haptic is out. Notice carefully how much haptic is out now. This is a key step in intrascular haptic fixation. You need to have a lot of haptic outside. So don't go very posterior. Then tuck the haptics in the 26 gauge chariot's pocket. Now watch, I have created a bad iris defect. So I'm using the single pass fourth throw pupiloplasty. And you can see now with one needle, it doesn't need a paracentesis on the side of the needle where it's going in straight. You need a paracentesis only on the side where the loop is going to come out. From the other side, I've taken a 30 gauge needle through the paracentesis. Again, remember the number four, single pass, four throw, pupiloplasty, and that is game, set, and match. So far, so good. I've done one. Now I'm going to do it because I need to make it smaller. So I'm making it my second portion there now. And you can see now my second single pass fourth row pupilacy done, but the superior is still problematic to me. So now I'm going to make my third one there. Now, watch now my problem. Now what we have is we have created an aerodialis ourselves. So we started this new technique, which is a modification of Michael Snyder's hangback technique. It is called the trocar assisted hangback technique. The problem in the hangback technique is you are at six o'clock position going up to 12 o'clock position with a double arm suture. Invariably, I can tell you, you'll get stuck with the corneal fibers getting into the needle. So what we decided to do is, I started this thing and it got published also in the EGO. We passed a trocar. Once the trocar is in the eye, I pass this double arm needle. See, it goes out, comes out like this. And I use that Orolab Sucha Hari Priya, which is just fantastic double arm proline uh, suture there. It's nine zero. Once one loop comes out, here you can see I'm passing the second one. Now, all you need to do is pull and that is over. Suture it and it's done. So now look, wherever the aerodialysis is, pass your trocar nine, exactly 180 degrees away from that. Now look, I'm going to take the double-armed proline needle, pass it through the trocar. Now it goes easily. One more advantage I tell you about the trocar-assisted hangback technique is, if the needle is single, it's very tough. It moves a lot. With the trocar, it gets guided very easily. So now once you have done that, I go through the iris. From the other side, I take a 30 gauge needle as I showed you in the animation, goes through sclera, railroad the two, bring it out. Once that is out, now same thing I will be doing on the 
with the other arm of the uh, uh, proline needle. So here you can see one has come out. Now I'm going to take the second arm. Remember, fluid is always on. If you notice my trocar, infusion cannula is always on. So fluid is always in the eye. There is no chance of the chamber collapsing. Now you can see it's pulled up that side. All I need to do is suture it and bury it. But when you pull this up, see what has happened. The iris goes up. So then you do the two-fold technique. That means you combine this again with a fourth row pupillosity and make that pupil back to normal. So here you can see now, I'm again doing the fourth row pupillosity, making that pupil back to normal. Now look, look at the one on the top superiorly. There's a huge iridolysis there. So I have to solve that iridolysis. And this is what I was telling you about. If you do a simple hangback without a trocar, I tell you from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock to reach, it's very tough. With the trocar, the game becomes extremely easy. You can see that trocar helps the guidance of the needle, which was a great shock to me and a good surprise to me also. So I just go in like this here. And once you start this trocar assisted handbag technique, I tell you what, you will start enjoying it because it makes life very easy, especially in these iridolysis. Here you can see I've used the 30 gauge needle, railroaded it, brought it out. Now I bring the other one, goes through the iris, brings it out. Now the next step which I want to show you is the Purkinje image. The game plan is I need to focus my Purkinje image on the pupil. That is the key factor here. So you can see now it is bang centered on the pupil. Once I have done that, then I know I should be okay. So now you see we have the glue dial in place. We have the iridolysis repaired. We have the fourth row pupillosity done. All I need to do is seal everything down with glue and complete the case. Okay, so that basically completes that particular presentation, which I wanted to show you about on this one of the longest days, which we had. Abhay? Yeah, very good, very good, Amar. You showed so many of your innovations and all of these innovations are, some of them slowly, but surely are getting recognized all over the world. So, you know, you showed it extremely well.